Number one, on a hot day, the temperature of an 80,000 liter swimming pool increases by 1.5 degrees Celsius. What is the net heat transfer during this period? Ignoring any complications such as loss of water by evaporation. All right. Uh, so for a detailed uh, discussion of you know the formulas that I'm the formula that I'm going to use here and how it applies and everything, please see my general video on uh, calorimetry. I'll leave a link in the uh, description below. In order to solve this problem, we're going to use the formula over here on the right hand side. This formula states that the uh, heat transferred and remember heat is energy, so this is in joules. Okay, the heat energy transferred. Uh, will be equal to, or the heat energy gain, or the heat energy loss, depending upon how you know you want to frame the uh, the analysis, will equal then the mass of that object multiplied then by the specific heat of that object multiplied then by the change in temperature. All right. So remember physics, we got to plug in here kilograms for the mass. The specific heat is going to be now a a property specific to that uh, material and then the change in temperature you can actually leave this change in celsius or in kelvin because the difference between two celsius temperatures or those two same kelvin temperatures just converted to the kelvin scale will be equivalent so basically i'm after i have to solve for q here and all i need to do is basically plug in the values and making sure i have the right uh, values though so do we know the uh, mass of the water well no they told us, though, that we have an 80,000 liter swimming pool, okay? So remember, that just means we know that we have some volume, whatever the shape is, right? This thing, let's just say, is 80,000 liters. Uh, what we need to do is we need to find, though, the mass, okay? So how do we convert volume into mass? Mm, you need to know the density, right? The density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. To find the mass, then we just simply cross multiply the density and volume, right? So it's simply going to be then the density of water, that is, multiplied by then the volume of water. So now you just have to make sure you have the right units and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the density of water in kilogram, right, kilogram per cubic meter. And then the volume I'm going to have to have in terms of cubic meter. All right. So that means then the mass of the water would be 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. That is the density of fresh water. Multiplied now by the volume of water in cubic meters. Notice how they gave it to us in liters. So we have to convert from liters into cubic meters here. You know that there's 1,000 liters in one cubic meter. So basically, we just have to take this value and divide it by 1,000. All right. Or just move the decimal three uh, places uh, to the left. So it really becomes 80.0 um, cubic meters. All right. When we do this multiplication out now, the mass then becomes 80,000. Okay, so you have 80,000 kilograms. Ah, very nice. All right, so we could have just left it right the same, and you might be seeing a nice little relationship here that basically whatever, if they tell you the liters, it's going to equal the kilograms, assuming you're talking about liquid water. Okay, um, all right, so now we know the mass. Uh, the specific heat, this will come from the table, or you might have to memorize it. So the specific heat of water is going to be, you have two values, but I'm going to use the uh, joule and kilogram uh, version. It's going to be 4,184 about, okay? And the units there will be joule per kilogram Celsius, right? Degree Celsius. You might also see degree Kelvin here. It doesn't matter, all right? Um, all right, and then just the change in temperature. You know that's always final minus initial, okay? So, and in this case, we don't have a final in initial. We just have, though, the overall change. It has increased by 1.5 centimeters, so that is the change. So anyway, without belaboring the point, let's just plug it all in. So we have 80,000 multiplied by then 4,184 multiplied then by the 1.50. And again, Q will work out to be 80,000 times 4184 multiplied then by 1.5. And we have a value here, quite a large value of 5.02, 5.02 multiplied uh, by 10 raised to the, let's see, 3, 6, 7, 8. It looks like 8. All right. And that, again, is in joules. So that is the amount of heat gained, all right, by the water. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. Please help us out and subscribe. Hit that like button and tell your friends if you can. We'll see you soon. Take care.